Hello. Um, ooh, shit. <laughs> Great start. Got a visual prop. It's knocked on the floor. Yeah, um, the time's come. Um, seems, that, seems every year. So I do. Um, um, I have a bit of an eBay moan. Um, it's, it's, it's always always goes nice it's when 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 you know there's always a point in in, in the year where where I decide to. Um, sell on some of my spares and it's just about the selling process and how it always does my nutting and it always just um, it sort of without fail it just winds me up I mean it's, it's always it's always to do with sort of like the um, sort of sort of the unknown sort of part I mean it's it's like um, it's exactly the same I mean it doesn't really matter I suppose if you're buying or selling on eBay because um, you know uh, if you're if if you're sort of forced sort of to wait without any sort of communication, then it just you know it's it's like a power trip from the people at the other end, isn't it? It just really gets them on tits. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, I, I I've only sold I've sold um, I've got sort of six of my best bits. I couldn't be asked to do do any more than that. And um, I didn't want to. I didn't want the hassle of an auction, so I set them at a good buy now price. I, I looked at the sort of the prices of all of them, and and the sort of the uh, the completed listings prices, and sort of picked sort of the bottom one and undercut that. So it was, I well, I picked it so it would have been the sort of the cheapest available buy now price, free postage, and um, also it'd be sort of. At the bottom end, at least at the bottom end, if not the the cheapest of the um, completed listings, like the sold listings. So just because you know, I generally, I generally want to sell things, and also, I mean, I, I want to avoid the sort of sell, sort of selling something on too too cheap that someone comes along, primarily and buys what, I'm, what I've got to sell primarily just to sell on. But um, there's a bit more. I'll get around to that in a minute. Um, Actually, sort of the main intention of this video, when I when I sort of sort of uh, before I was selling, was um, to pass on sort of a bit of a um, bit of a tip, but it's it sort of turned into a whole different sort of video ever since I sort of suffered the hassles of selling stuff. I can't I can't I can't work out how people do it regularly because it just does my nut in. You know, it just really winds me up, and it's it's. it's so many sort of complications, you know, there's always different factors which complicate things, but I've had to write a little list, a little list on a little bit of note paper. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, um, I, I, I put them at good enough prices so they, so they would sell quickly. Uh, the first one sold within an hour. There's another one. That sort of sold in an hour, but I'll get around to that. And then the others sold within a day, and there was one more that took about not quite three days to sell. And um, eventually, it, it, it was a, a good, like I said, it was a good sort of level by now. But eventually, it sold. And with the PayPal, um, with the PayPal uh, notification came um, came a note saying. Uh, please, was it? Please, can you um put your, what was it? Please, can you put your seller name, and the the listing number on the back of the package, please, and um. What was it? And could you could you package it carefully so it's protected during transit, which which I always do, and I had to actually put on the listing, so you didn't have to actually say that, but I mean, it sort of going into that detail made me made me think. And um, I uh, I was he paid so that's he's sort of fulfilled his part of the bargain. So I, I went to leave feedback, but but before I did, I checked to see what this guy's feedback was. And um, it it's one of these I've never I've only ever seen it one time before. It's um, somebody with private feedback, so you can't actually read it. All you can see is the sort of the the numbers and the stats. There's, there's no actual feedback. So. I don't know. 
it's obviously it's a buyer because when you have that you can't actually you can't actually sell things with that sort of feedback you can only buy with it so um obviously it's somebody who buys to sell and that person had bought my um my game but it was it was 20 quid this game and that was a good level that was that's sort of relatively cheap but not so cheap that it'd be worthwhile anyone buying to sell on but um obviously you know that that that's exactly what this guy's done um so yeah i mean you've got this private feedback so which was sort of a bit of a giveaway and it turns out um it is exactly exactly what this uh this account was it's his account for buying to sell on and then he's got like um ebay page and it turns out the ebay page um so sort of another ebay page for selling um sells primarily to australia so obviously he's obviously sort of tapped into the idea that um australian prices are a lot higher and decided to uh, pitch pitch his prices at sort of a level just above that even so essentially what he did he bought up my game for 20 quid i'm not gonna say what it is <laughs> he bought up my game for 20 quid more than doubled the price essentially um uh, pitched it or because he's got something similar already something similar on the, on on his on his already on his selling page pitched it at, um I think 43 something plus a bit postage so it was over it was about 46 quid in total so he'd more than doubled it which I, I don't really understand how it's going to work because I don't know how he's going to sell it unless it's, it is directly to Australia because people are used to the high prices so indirectly I'm responsible for um, the high prices in Australia so if anybody from Australia is watching I apologise <laughs> but I want to know how um, how can I how can you I don't know it's, you can't really you can't really stop that, can you? But I, I just, there's no way it would sell in in the UK, because I mean it took it took almost three days for my one to sell, and I thought I thought I'd sort of um, put it at a really good sort of competitive price, but but in, sort of enough to make it worth my while. But um, obviously he thinks he can make a profit out of it. But he's he's a um, he's uh, based in Newcastle. This website based in Newcastle, so. Like that's obviously where his, where his address is. I had to send it to, but just don't know. <laughs> I don't want to contribute to that sort of that sort of um, you know. Again, that just you people you hear about people talking about eBay, eBay prices, and, and I it always I never understand how people make money. How the hell is this guy going to make money? Unless it is to sell to Australia because. They, people out there are so used to high prices. It just, I don't know, blows my mind. But I haven't left any feedback, no. I'm not going to leave feedback if I can't read it. <laughs> Even though he did, like I said, he did fill his part of the bargain. Um, I think that the second thing that sold, again, sold within an hour, I've still got it. I, I put the listing up, went away, Went away for about a couple of hours to have my dinner or whatever. I came back and it had sold. I thought, oh, great. And it said, this has sold. But then there was a, a message with a listing. And it says, I will, because I will pay £22, uh, £22 um, shortly through a cheque or postal order. Because um, I don't, I, I don't, I do like to give some options. But in my experience, vast majority of people who choose, uh, you know, who choose, about the vast majority of times I've had someone wanting to pay with something other than PayPal, it just turns into a ball lake. I've had someone who was a proper wine-up merchant wanting to pay with a postal order a few years ago, and that they were just sort of in it to, to string me along. And I've had another kid who, um, who wanted to pay the postal order, I think it's before they changed the, the prices, because Postal orders are bloody expensive, aren't they? Uh, there's another, this other kid who, um, that was another reason because he was quite young. So obviously, he was quite young, so he can't have a PayPal account. Well, mate, I don't know if he's going to have an eBay account, I don't know. But I don't, I don't want to sort of rule those people out because obviously it's sort of, sort of spat on the screen. Slightly unfair. So, you know, offer sort of checks or postal orders. But he'd, um, he'd sort of, when he, went, when he got it from the postal order, he'd incorrectly labelled it and not put my name on it. So I took it to the 
I ended up taking it to the bank and, and the woman behind the counter sort of for some reason didn't really know how to process it properly. She she crossed it out and um which she shouldn't have done, which basically sort of made it null and void. I had to take it to the um I had to take it to the post order, and the people in the post order said no, they should they should be able to process that. So I took it back to I think it's a different branch, and um, I explained the situation to the woman behind the counter, and she sort of did sort of like a nudge, nudge, wink, wink. And she said, "I haven't seen that with a cross through it." Wink, wink. So she she really I she did she was really nice this woman. She, I explained the situation, and she put it through, even though it, this post order had already been sort of uh, crossed out. So, you know, I, I was really grateful for that. But at the same time, it didn't have my name on it. It's postal order, order where it should have done. And then and now I've got this other guy who said, I'm going to pay my check a postal order. But then he sent me, directly after that, he bought my game. He sent me another message saying, uh, would it be possible to pay by um, bank transfer? <laughs> but correct me if I'm wrong, but bank transfers involve involve you giving your bank details and then somebody puts money directly into your bank account that is how it works is there is no alternative way is there there's no alternative to to that is there i'm, I'm positive there's no way that... so in the end you seriously want me to give a random dude my bank details so he can put money in my bank account because he said um he said he hasn't got PayPal. <laughs> and so I, I do sort of believe him because he, he'd sort of, he had sort of six months out, six months out from eBay, and um, he'd, he'd sort of had good feedback before that. But obviously, his PayPal account's gone somewhere, and uh, he hasn't got it. So I had to explain to him, sorry, mate. Um, yeah, you, uh, I'm happy to take a check or postal order. Obviously, he didn't want to pay postal order because he didn't know how to pay for it. Um, I won't, I won't be able to use a bank transfer, I'm afraid, because I'm not prepared to give out, give out my bank details. And so um, he said, well, um, I can uh, I can send you a cheque, but it'll have to be on Friday when my girlfriend's my girlfriend's away and she's coming back on Friday. There's always someone, always something like that. Someone's away, something like that. And she's, it, all these things add up and you can't help but feel like you're being strung, strung along. I don't know, as if, as if he'd sort of sought out people who were prepared to take um, checks or postal orders just for the pure wind up of it I don't know because I've he said uh, Friday so I um, messaged him yesterday no Friday about 7 o'clock uh, just say to, can you let me know if you, when you send it and there's no response I'm going to wait until probably about 7 o'clock tomorrow or after the post turns up tomorrow at least and if it doesn't turn up I'm going to message him again so uh, can you let me know when you send it? Otherwise, I'm going to have to start thinking about relisting it. And it's just, <laughs> just, just, I can't help. But that's the it's the unknown thing. Is when there's no communication. When I sell things, I like, I like to people keep people fully informed because it, it's when you go, when you go for a whole period without hearing either way. If you're a seller without hearing, if you if you're waiting to be paid or if you're a a buyer waiting for your, what you've bought. It's it's that sort of that unknown, that empty space when there's no communication, where you start thinking that you know your mind starts going off at tangents and stuff. And uh, you know, ninety nine point nine percent of the people on eBay are legit. They might not do things to the, the same the same way that you do them, but they're legit. But if you've encountered wind up merchants in the past, they can't you can't help but think that. It's gonna happen again, but um, so I'm gonna wait. Like I said, I'm gonna wait till tomorrow. But yeah, and oh, this other this other um thing sold. Uh, I I was, this this time it was my fuck up. Um, I offer yeah, I don't mind posting abroad, but I offer um, uh, international tract postage, which is pricey, and generally I I set. Because I, I offer for domestic postage, I offer free postage, which I, I roughly is about three quid because I use first class, and with packaging and stuff, um, you know, it comes around to about just over three quid. So I just sort of set it three quid and factor that into the prices and offer free postage. So when it comes to international postage, I, I look at the price so that will cost international tracks and take that three quid off. So, you know, to 
you know, like a good parcel to Australia would be ten pound five p international track. So I, I always fed it at seven pound five p, and then but then uh, it works out okay because to the continent it should be less than it should be sort of, you know, um, slightly more than that anyway. So it looks like everyone looks like they get a the bargain, but in, in a sense, in essence, I'm only paying exactly the same amount as I would have done if it was sort of domestic postage. But then, totally forgot that it was. Um, I, I think a while back I bought. It was a sealed copy of um, Dreamful: The Longest Journey. It was like a PC version, and it was uh, it was the special edition. And um, totally forgot it weighed a ton. Put it in the box. The box, yeah, oh, seven pound five p. Uh, it should cost me ten pound five p. When I got to the post office, totally forgot that. Um, I think it's the whole the parameters of of how the, the the price goes up has changed a lot in the post office. I think recently, and so the the bands are narrower, and so um, my it came to just over six hundred six hundred grams this package, and I was expecting to pay ten pound five p, having taken seven pound five p from this person in Australia, ended up having to pay fifteen seventy five. <laughs> <laughs> So then I still had a few auctions, still were listings, still a few, still had a few listings up. And it's just made me paranoid. I made me paranoid that um, this could just happen every time. So I, I looked into it. I looked into it, and um, I had tried to sort of set the 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 the, the, um, the cost specifically for regions in the in in the world. So I didn't didn't make the same mistake. But then eBay systems so like. It's like a labyrinth. It's convoluted. I just couldn't work out how to do it. In the end, I had to. I had to make it EU only, so I didn't make the same mistake. I don't want to do that. I don't want to. Um, I don't want to um, not post to to, uh, to play other places in the world just because it's going to cost me too much, and I can't work out how to set the postage. It's something to do with um, uh, uh, use postage tables, and I think I have to. I have to set the price per region. And depending on per region or, or weight or it's just it's just I don't know I did my editing in the end <laughs> if I sell it on again I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to work out how to do it but but then it, it makes it worse because you've got bloody the post office with their their just just it, I'm sure it was a lot more basic the way their prices were sort of um, were set out but it's just so much so complicated now and like. You know, um, just it, the, the sort of the parameters are so narrow, and you know, it's just the prices sort of change. It's sort of in you know in through minute increments. You know, depending on where it's going and how much it weighs and stuff like that, or what sort of postage, and it, like, they never make sense. And there's all these different rules for these different um, posting to different um, locations throughout the world, different regions. And it's just, <laughs> All these things, all these things add up to turn me into one sort of wound up little hairy bastard. Hate it. <laughs> I think that's it. I think that's it. That's my just blown off steam really. Like the last time, the last time, was it the last time? I had this poor bloke from from Germany wanted to buy um a, a sealed copy of um Zeno Saga Two. I had, and um, you know quite rightly. I don't have a problem with that. It's just the, the thing is, we we couldn't communicate. We couldn't communicate, <laughs> and I wasn't sure that he knew what he was buying. And I, I didn't speak German, and he didn't speak English, so we were communicating through um, Google Translate, and you know we were basically speaking gobbledygook to each other. <laughs> it's funny if you weren't involved in it, and it was funny afterwards. But at the time, it was just, ah, but that worked out okay then, because you know he, he realised that it wasn't what he wanted. And I was worried if I sold it to him, and he got it, and then sort of uh, took the took the uh, the seal off and realised it wasn't what it wasn't what he wanted. Then um, he's basically unsealed a brand new sealed game. So I didn't want that to happen. So I had to make damn sure before I I sent it that, that um, you know that was it. That was exactly what he wanted. But that that resolved. Uh, these still I don't know. These still aren't resolved. I mean it's all it's all sent. Uh, apart from that one, the guy wanted to pay me a bank transfer. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to give my I'm going to give my bank details to some random dude on the internet. 
<laughs> I've not heard from him since. First time I used eBay, back, way back in 2002, it was when um, it's when they, they didn't hide um, sort of uh, bidder information or sort of buyer information. So any anyone could contact you. They could look at your details and they could contact you and they could see what you were bidding on. And I I tried to buy that my video camera there, and um, I'd bid on a few, and I got an email from somebody in Romania saying, oh yeah, we see, we've see we seen you bid on one of these uh, video cameras. We've got one and we can we can offer it for you for sort of like a fraction of what it normally goes for. All you have to do is pay by um, uh, Western Union bank transfer and, uh, you know, then we'll send it to you. And, you know, obviously preying on me being a new eBay, uh, me being totally naive. In the end, I had to go down to Western Union and ask them how the process worked and they said to me, um, no, once you've sold the money, you can't get it, you sent the money, you can't get it back. So in the end, I thought, this is, pre, this is pre-PayPal as well. I thought, yeah, right, okay. <laughs> Went back, uh, messaged the guy, and said, oh, I don't mind, don't mind um, paying that much, but um, we, if we can use escrow, which is, I think, sort of pre, pre-PayPal um, sort of similar sort of thing, but I think it's what, isn't it what Americans use for um, buying selling houses, escrow. But I think at the time, at the time, it was sort of like a, the alternative to sort of pre-PayPal alternative, but um, yeah. Suffice to say, I didn't send any money to Romania. <laughs> I was tempted to say, "Yeah, I've got, I've got a mate in Interpol. He, he's, he's uh, in the, the Romanian branch. I tell you what, um, I'll give him the money, and he can, he can come, you know, pick it up." But oh, no, I didn't. That didn't happen. Should have done though. But that's my beef. Let me just confuse. Let me just confuse and consult. Yeah, broken listing tools. That was another thing. Complicates things. I've always found eBay's system to broken. You know, like you, you, you set something on a certain font and a certain size, and for some reason it decides to, when you're halfway through, it decides to sort of change itself. Why does that happen? And I was when I was trying to um, trying to sort of change sort of the listing that last listing that I had running to um, EU only. It was it wouldn't change. I was like clicking on the box and it was still saying worldwide. I was like, why the fuck is it not changing? <laughs> Eventually it was all right, but I'm sure it's to do with eBay's twitchy um, uh, listings tools. I don't know, they're just, they're really highly strung. It really winds me up. You know, I don't need to wind up anymore. I'm a, I'm a highly, I'm a sort of tense little bastard as it is. Why not always come across? But it's true. Uh, yeah, that's it. I've blown off steam. Feels slightly better, slightly better. But on to the good stuff. Anybody new? Uh, unfortunately, this is it for anybody in the UK. It just doesn't sort of go around sort of around the world. But um, there might be equivalents in um, other countries. But this is something that happened upon recently. Um, uh, when I was obviously it was just sort of before I'd listed all my stuff and I ne- I needed I've got all all my eBay like sort of bubble wrap stuff down there you know padded envelopes it's all down there already but um, I don't need it anymore because obviously, obviously everything's all sold and you know pretty much packaged up but in um in pound world you can get these things and these things are brilliant these things are brilliant they're um. So as you can see, cardboard, cardboard envelopes, really solidly made, really solidly made. That glue on there works. It's good glue, which you can't always say from those their bubble wrap envelopes in pound shops. It's pound world. You can get a pack of five for these, of these, for um, obviously a pound. <laughs> and um, they, they, essentially, it's DVD size, but it's DVD size plus you can put a bit of bubble wrap in, layer of bubble wrap. And once the, you, you put whatever it is in there, and um, you can slide in. It's a bit snug, you know, you can't have too much bubble wrap. Two layers might be a bit much. But believe me, I think um, oh, it doesn't have to be bubble wrap. I've used this weird sort of spongy paper stuff, which you know, is equivalent to bubble wrap. Once you put it in there, you seal it up. And I always put tape across, you know, tape across the, the, the little opening. Once you seal it up, it feels really sort of spongy. Actually, I've got one. This is the, this is the one that... Um, this is the one that the guy um, uh, hasn't yet paid for. There you go, look at that. It goes like that. And you can feel it. It's all sort of, it feels like it's got air in it almost. It's sort of spongy. And it goes like that. 
So there you go. Here, look, I've just put tape across there. So, and it's that thin. And brilliantly, brilliantly, it's it's packaged up really well. It's better than um, a bubble wrap envelope, you know, because it's solid. But and you've got bubble wrap in it anyway. Um, it goes through. Um, it goes through the little uh, sort of tester in the post office, so you can get the you can get the um, the lowest tariff. So you can it you, it can classify it as a large letter. So pay one pound twenty four for first class postage. So that's brilliant in my book because I'm cheap. <laughs> but you know, cheapness is sexy, <laughs> isn't it, ladies? Sorry, going off on one. Yeah, but these things, Pound World, get five for a pound. So it's like 20p. Put a bit of bubble wrap in there. Like I said, it only fits, really fits um, DVD size things. For anybody who sells sort of PS, PS2 games, Xbox, Xbox 360 games, Wii games, uh, GameCube games, these things are great. Really good. Way better than bubble wrap envelopes or jiffy, jiffy bags. It's getting a bit dark, isn't it? I can tell. The light's gone weird. But yeah, from Pound World. From Pound World, the thing is, I've bought, I've used um, in the past packaging boxes from pound shops, and they're generally pretty good. But the stuff you used to be able to get was so much better. The quality of the boxes was great, but then they stopped doing them obviously because they've costed them too much. And then what they've been replaced with, which you can't always get, but they've been replaced with these things that are sort of not as well made. The cardboard's cheaper, and the, the glue on the the glue on the flaps are cheaper. You know, it's just generally cheaper. And I've always regretted not having foresight to buy up a whole load at, at once and sort of stash them, which is what I think I'll do with these because these are genuinely good stuff and you can't always say that from stuff you get in pound shops that it's worth the pound you're paying. I think these are because obviously this is only 20p equivalent of, you know. So it's Pound World. They're not everywhere branches. They're not, they're not as many branches as Pound Land, but you get these. And it obviously says do not bend. And they're rock solid once you're in there. Once in there, it was totally, totally protected. Stuff on the inside, no one could complain about the packaging for that. And it's barely any different, same price. So, yeah, one pound in pound world. These, they're like, they're all sort of perforated with. That's the, so look, there you go. That's me. That's to end on a, end on a slightly more positive note. Shit, it wasn't going to be that long, but uh, one of these days I'm going to stop saying that my videos are going to be shorter than I hope they will be. Pardon me, pardon me. See you later. Thanks for watching. There will be more PS1 videos coming up very soon, and you know, maybe a few other things. I think I, I'm sure I've got. I'm going to mix it up a bit slightly, get a bit samey. I have got one or two pickups, but only two. Yeah. But yeah. <sighs> Thanks for watching. <laughs> Thanks for listening to my to my um, my beef. Thanks for being a conduit from me letting off steam. So yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you later.